morning, West Side. Good morning, good morning. Won't you let Pastor Casey know that his job is quite secure, amen? <laughs> I am very inadequate for this, amen. But thank God for you today, amen. Thank God for Pastor Casey and his wife, amen, and their family. And for you, West Side, and sharing this preacher teaching moment, amen. I must have really loved West Side because I got up real early this morning to be here for the 815 service. Amen. <laughs> My God, thank God, thank God. Thank the good shepherd to set the spiritual alarm clock for me to get up and be here on time. Amen. Listen, I, I was looking for my wife, and she's, she have no sense of time. Amen. <laughs> uh, please don't tell her I, I said that. Uh, but I want to thank uh, one of my deacons and trustees, uh, Deacon Martin, for being and one of our head urchers, Deacon uh, Sister uh, LaRue, for being with us. And I thank God just for you, amen, uh, for being here and sharing in this preaching moment. Uh, amen. Listen, there is a word from the Lord this morning found in John, the 10th chapter, around the 11th verse. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Uh, uh, I told the guys up in the booth, I said, y'all just follow me because I'm, I'm pretty much led by the Holy Spirit, amen? <laughs> and uh, I, I am a diehard Baptist preacher. Uh, I won't hoop for you, but I, I'm, hopefully I can get you excited, amen? <laughs> and, and, and hopefully this Alabama boy will do good in the Midwest. Now, I had some KU uh, folks in the early morning service who was happy yeah. that they, they beat Creighton, amen? And, and can I tell you why they beat Creighton? Because I was praying for them, amen? <laughs> I, I, I normally don't watch too much sports unless it's Alabama football, but, but I, I happened to sit in the restaurant and they were playing, playing Creighton and KU, so I started cheering for KU. Uh, my wife got some, got some lineage to KU, bless her heart. Uh, but, but, but Creighton was given a pretty good, tough, rough time there for a minute, amen? But, but because KU know the good shepherd, he, he provided a win for him, amen? And all you K-State fans, God bless you, amen? <laughs> Listen, loosen up. Come on, walk with me. I like to have fun, amen? Uh, uh, that's just me. I'm, I'm just a little country boy from Alabama. And I'm glad to be here in the Midwest, pastoring one of the greatest churches in this city. Thank God for the pastors of this city who were coming together, regardless of denomination, ethnicity, and all of that good stuff, because we realize that we're called to kingdom work. Kingdom work. Amen? Kingdom work. That's God's. All of us are created in his image. Amen. I, th I thank God. I, I, you know, I got one amen. I'm going to get one amen. Can, can you hold him or her up for me? I know I'm going to get an amen from right there. Right. If, if nobody else say amen. <laughs> amen. Loose it up. Let's ride this thing together. Amen. Listen, Dr. Charles Stanley says this. He said, the bottom line in Christian life is obedient, and most people don't even like the word obedient. They don't. I do a lot of marriages. Amen. And they said, Dr. Lewis Bishop, can you just leave that obedient part out of it? And I said, no, because that's part of it, amen? If we're going to get anywhere in life, we have to learn how to be obedient, whether it's uh, in our family setting, church setting, on our jobs, amen? That's just part of our culture, amen? We, we have to be obedient to the laws. You know, every now and then, when I leave home and come up 152 and hit 435, then hit on 45, go up to 92 and cut across. There's some time when Pastor Dr. Lewis uh, is not being obedient to the speed limit. Uh, so I run the risk of getting a ticket, amen? I remember one Sunday very vividly, I was running a little late, and man, I was rolling. I mean, I had to pedal to the metal. And all of a sudden, I, I met this car, and I'm like, it looked like a State trooper, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I, I didn't let up. So he whooped around and got behind me. Wee, wee, wee. Pulled me over. Before I could say anything, my wife said, uh, he's a pastor and we late to church. 
And the good shepherd stepped in. And the, and the officer said, Pastor, will you just slow it down a little bit? I said, yes, sir. And before he could get out of sight, y'all, I got back in it. Amen. <laughs> because I was determined to get to sunflower all the time. Amen. But, that, but, but, but that's life. All of us, at some time, step out of the realm of obedience, step out of the realm that the good shepherd has to step in and save us. Amen? Come on, talk back to me. Talk back. Let's see. Amen. A-M-E-N. I went to school a few days. Amen. Can we say that? Amen. All right. I told Pastor Casey I was going to get y'all to talk back to me because in our church, it's a call and response. Amen? Watch this. So A.W. Peake says, he said, the primitive of God's character guarantees the fulfillment of his promises. Wow. What a declaration that the promises that God has for us, he will fulfill them, watch this, based on our character as we're aligned to the word of God. I grew up in a home, single parent home. My mother did the best she could. I mean, she was a, um, uh, we call them back in them days, a special ed teacher. Now y'all call them uh, learning challenges or whatever. My wife does it now. She, she gets so many, so I can't use special ed anymore. Amen. I said, I don't know why I can't use special ed because I'm one of your number one students. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but thank God for the good shepherd. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Can I, can I, can I do something in here this morning? Can I prophesy to somebody in this house this morning? Listen. There's some things God is turning around for you and I. There's some marriages in here that's on the blink. I don't care how much you smile. There's some times when you say, man, I wish I had to walk out on that joker. I met a young man right here in this blue shirt. I told him, I said, man, your wife show sure makes you look good. She said, yes, I do. Watch this. But there's some times in our life we ain't waking up feeling blessed and highly favored. Do I have any witness in here? There's some times in your life when we struggle to put one foot in front of the other. Maybe I'm the only one getting to that season in my life. I ain't waking up and say, Lord, thank you. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. I jump out of bed and run to the restaurant. There's times when I walk from, the, from, from my bedroom to the kitchen, I forget while I went in there for. I ain't got no witness in here. <laughs> Maybe y'all, maybe y'all smarter than me. Maybe y'all know something. I don't know. Whatever it is after church, can you come and tell me about it? But there's some times in our life, there's some struggles in our life, that there's some challenges in our life that we have a hard time dealing with. And the truth of the matter, it's just life. Job says this man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Come here. But what I like about Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11, so said to God, said, I know the plans that I have for you. And, and, and guess what? As long as we're falling in line with the good shepherd, the plans that God has for us, they have an expected end. Listen, when I went to school, uh, it, it was my desire to become this great uh, running back. Because in my day, it was Calvin Hill of the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all, I'm going to date myself in a minute. But, but then when I got to about high school, I had a coach named Coach Long. He said, Calvin, come here. He said, man, we got about 20 running backs. He said, won't you come over to the defensive side and hit them versus being hit? I said, oh, okay. So I, I started playing middle linebacker. And from middle linebacker, by the time I got to college, I was a, 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 a halfback. I always go to the power side of the offense, amen? And, 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 and I learned that it was better to hit then be hit. Then I started preaching, and then I started understanding that the devil hit me regardless of what position I'm playing. Amen? And I want you to understand that the devil going to hit all of us regardless of what position we're playing, but because we have the good shepherd, the cushion is just a little easier. Amen? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The good shepherd, that's three things we want to deal with real quickly, then we're going to let you out because they got me on a timer. I said, you can't put a Baptist preacher on a timer. <laughs> because I'm in the west side and you do everything decent and in order, I'm going to follow the book, amen? That way y'all invite me back. <laughs> but watch this. Three things the good shepherd deals with. The good shepherd says, number one, he said, uh, my sheep knows me. Number two, he talks about protecting 
And number three, you provide the hive that all there is. Amen. He, he said, the good shepherd, well, let's go back to, he, he knows me. Come on. Watch this. I, I, I got these fellows up there working. They said, Bishop, you working us today. Watch this. Watch this. But before we get there, watch this. That there's some things that are going to happen. God is going to make us like Jesus. Watch this. Because some of us, even those that are getting baptized today, they think because they come to Christ, that all of their issues and all of their concerns and all of their worries going to cease. Can I help somebody? They're just beginning. God wants us to be like Jesus. Jesus was not spared from difficulties. Jesus had some dark moments. He felt some pain. He felt some disappointment. One thing Jesus never incurred was sickness. But all of us are going to have some sick days. Matter of fact, as the songwriter said, I won't complain. He said, all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't complain. Watch this. It's going to help you. It's going to help you. There's no need in complaining anyhow. That's in my Alabama vernacular. What we have to do is seek God and seek his face, his direction, and his healing purpose for us because he says that he knows you and I. Matter of fact, there's this great song out today that says, he knows my name. And because he knows my name is the indicator that he knows where I live. And if he knows where I live, then he knows what I'm going through. Is there anybody in Westside? So, Pastor, that's me because I'm going through some stuff behind my smile, behind my mascara, my makeup, my weave, uh, my hair color. There's some stuff I'm going through that I ain't told my spouse, that I haven't told the pastor because I don't want nobody to know my business. But the good shepherd said, come here, I already know. I know where you're at. I know the challenge. I, I know what you're faced with. And because some of us are too afraid to go to him, he said, I'm going to knock on your door. Who is it? It's me, the good shepherd. I'm waiting on you just to come and confess. Come and let me know what's going on with you. It's okay. It's okay. It's like a parent. We know when our children, something going on with them. I know what's happening with my daughter, even she's in Greer, South Carolina. I can call her or she can call me and I listen to her voice and I said, Brittany, what's going on with you? And she hem her around and found she said, well, dad, I went to the doctor and such. I said, okay, it's cool. Dad, Grayson, my uh, three-year-old grandson, she said, dad, his lung, one of his lungs is not developing the way they should and I can hear the concern in her voice. And I'm saying, don't worry, because the good shepherd that we know, the good shepherd that, that we are in line with, he's able to do for Grayson what Poppy can't do for him. Hallelujah. He, 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 he can be in, in Kansas City and Leavenworth and Greer, South Carolina at the same time because he's an omnipresent God. Oh, my God. He, he can move quicker than quick. Amen. A big mama put it like this. She said, in the nick of time. I, I've been trying to look that word nick up. I can't find it in the Bible. But because big mama said he moves in the nick of time, that means he's moving quicker than time, time moving. Listen, he's moving. And somebody in this house today needs to know that God is moving on your behalf. The good shepherd is moving on your behalf because he knows your name. Oh, my God. Do you know your name? Do you know his name, the Good Shepherd? Watch this, watch this. We going somewhere. Watch this, we going somewhere. And I got to get there in about 35 minutes or less, amen. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, Deacon Martin, don't you take this back to Sunflower. <laughs> Y'all got to give me my 40 minutes, amen. <laughs> watch this, yeah. So, so here's what the Good Shepherd does. Because he knows our name. Uh, First lady, you late. <laughs> come, come on down front. I want to put you in timeout. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on down. 
Look at. <laughs> Pastor Casey told me, he said, he said, Lewis, you can act like you're at home. So I'm, I'm hey, now when I get home, <laughs> I might be in timeout. Amen. <laughs> Watch this. Because I'm the good shepherd, I love her. Amen. Don't, don't she make me look good? Oh, my God. I tell you, I got an amen right here. Watch this, watch this. So because he knows our name, and guess what? He knows our needs. He knows our desire. And whatever we need from him, all we have to do is just ask. ask. The Bible says you have not because what? You ask not. Don't be, don't be afraid to ask. Amen. Watch this. I need to help you today to get out of a rut. I need to help you today to get in a better place. I need to help you today to understand that the enemy, he may form some weapon, but they won't prosper. Amen. Here's what I learned about ministry. That the enemy, if it can't get to you and I, then he's going to get to the best thing that we love. If it can't get to mom and daddy, you get in the children. Can't get in the children, you get in the grandchildren. And if you're a pastor, if you can't get in your deacons, you get in your trustee. Can't get in the trustee, he get in your members. If you can't get in the members, he get in the dog, cat, bow wow, and wow wow. Amen. But the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's his whole mission. That's his whole purpose. And guess what? He's very consistent. He don't take a day off. He don't take vacation. He don't take a sick day. He don't take a day off because it's cold or it's too hot. He's on his job 24-7, 365. And guess what? You and I have to stay in the word of God because we have to stay connected to the good shepherd if we want him to protect us. So my second point is he protects us. He protects us. The good shepherd protects us. How many of you know that there's some times in your life when you've been driving and you didn't see another car coming, but because of the good shepherd protecting us, he dispatches angels? Hallelujah. I like that. Because see, my wife, can I talk about her a little bit? Y'all won't get upset. She always want to drive me, brothers. I don't know because she loved me or just because she wanted to be in control. She said, I drive. I said, no, I got this. I got this today. I said, because I want to stay saved today. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when she's driving me, I'm praying all the way. Because sometimes she don't pay attention to what's going on around her. And the other part is that, that she's not a person who understands northeast South or West. Brothers, you can say amen. <laughs> I ain't by myself. So if, I, so if she's driving, I have to tell her, take a right, take a left, go straight ahead. I can't tell her go north to south because she'll be like, I don't know that. But because we're connected with the good shepherd, at times when I'm not in a car with her, and she'll call me and say, baby, I'm lost. I said, where are Give me a landmark. And I'll tell her where to go. And she says, how do you know that? Because before there was a GPS, there was a G good shepherd. And one thing about growing up in the country, you learn direction, amen? Matter of fact, we could go out and look up in the stars at night and tell you which way to go, amen? Then I went in the military, they called themselves teaching me to understand landmarks. So I knew that already, amen? I'm a Quam boy, I'm a country boy from Alabama. I know about that stuff. I know what the Big Dipper looked like and all that good stuff. But guess what? Because I'm connected to the good shepherd, he give me even more insight. He protect us. Oh, my God. He protect us. Even when you and I wasn't worthy to be protected. Even when we was, thought we was bigger than life itself. When we thought we was walking in a place and we didn't need his protection. He will protect 
affected us even in our ignorance. Can I use that word and don't offend anybody? I'll just talk about me. He protected me even though I was ignorant as a boat weaver on a cotton patch in Alabama. He protected me from some stuff because he wanted to get me to a place where I realized that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh my God, I feel something in here. I feel something in here. There's some things in my life that he protected me from. He kept me from. There's some failures. There's some sickness. There's some investments. What I thought I understood what investment looked like. He said, no, no, no. That's a pyramid. Don't get involved in that. If it seemed too easy, it ain't worth getting involved. Anything worth having is worth working for. Then I read somewhere, it said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes we want to get ahead of God. Can I help you? Just stay with the good shepherd. Stay with the good shepherd. Here's how he protects you. I, I was a young man and I, I just knew I was in love. Before I met my wife. I, I just knew that this was the one. I went home. My grandma said this. I call her big mama. She said, boy, I really didn't know my name until after I got out of Alabama, amen. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said in her, and my grandma, she, she ain't one of those educated folks who went to the, 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 the great university. She just said, she ain't the one, boy. She said, bust my bubble. I'm like, man, she don't know what she talking about. She old folks, are old, she don't know nothing. She said, listen, the Lord says she's not the one. Okay. Fast track, some years later, I'm working in the pharmaceutical industry, and this young lady comes in to get her prescription filled. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I've been filling that prescription for the last 25 years. Come here, somebody. <laughs> What I thought was what I wanted really wasn't what I needed because God gives us what we need versus what we want. He supplies our need. Amen. Now, somebody in here, I want to tell you, put the brakes on it. He or she ain't the one. Wait on the Lord. The Bible said a man that finds a woman finds what? A good thing. Oh, my God. There's some brothers in here. You're single. Stay single, but wait on the Lord. Amen. There's some ladies in here that are single. Stay single, but wait on the Lord. You don't want to get ahead of yourself because you want the good shepherd to provide that guy that's going to work every day, that guy that's going to have some benefit, that guy that's going to pray with you, that guy that's going to get up at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock and come to West Side with you and sit there and say, we're in this thing together. That guy who understands what the obedience and walking with God look like. Is there anybody in West Side today say, I need the good shepherd, number one, to know my name, to provide for me, and number three, to protect me? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The good shepherd. The good shepherd. The good shepherd that looks beyond our faults and supplies I'll need the good shepherd who knows everything about us but won't tell nobody. The good shepherd, the good shepherd, the good shepherd. The songwriter said, the good shepherd, every now and then he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. The good shepherd, the good shepherd that looks at Lewis and said, Lewis, you in West Side, and because you're in West Side, I'm gonna make you look like you know what you're talking about. The Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd said, You in West Side, and you got to let those folks know on the West Side of the town, we know we do it on the North Side of the town. I got anybody in here want to walk with me, want to have some worship to understand that the Good Shepherd, can you do the, can you lift your hand and say, I know the Good Shepherd because it was the Good Shepherd that woke me up this morning. It was the Good Shepherd that while I slumbered and while I slept, it wasn't an alarm clock that got me up. It was the Good Shepherd that got me up, got me moving this morning. Mm. 
the good shepherd, the good shepherd, the good shepherd knows what the sheep need because the sheep sometimes need direction. They need guidance. They need instruction. That's why children that are in here, the parent come before the child. Every parent ought to say hallelujah. Because you got some children that think they know more than you and I, and they haven't lived as long as you and I. Amen? Oh, maybe I'm long as I got three adult kids. They children, young adults, they, they, they got their own family, but yet sometimes they still in my pocket. They know what Cash App and all that other stuff is, amen? <laughs> they think you're a walking ATM. You can say amen. They in here still say amen. Say it loud, amen. <laughs> amen. Well, I'm just a good shepherd that I got to go. I got about nine minutes and 30-something seconds. <laughs> they, they pushing the Baptist guy. But I love it, amen. Because I want you to understand the good shepherd how he provides, how he protects, and that he knows your name. Watch this. I remember as a young man growing up in Alabama, I really didn't know we was poor or where I'm from, poor. Because everything we needed, the good shepherd provided. Everything we needed, the good shepherd provided. Oh, my God. And the reason he provided is because we was connected to parents that was connected to him. Mm. You got to watch who you're connected to. Oh, my God. As long as we're connected to the source, he's going to provide the resources. Oh, y'all miss your opportunity to shout. As long as we're connected to the source, the good shepherd, then he provides the resources. How do you know, Lewis? I do more with less now. Amen? When I left corporate America, and I, I was with kind of reluctant to leave because I'm like, man, I worked all my life. I, I grew up in rural Alabama. Now I'm making more money than I ever seen. My grandma wouldn't make this much money in a whole month. And you telling me, Lord, I got to come off this job. I, I got to leave these little luxuries and these little perks. And I, I go from making X amount to zero. And my wife looking at me, we're in the same house with the same house paper, with the same car notes, same utility bills. And we at zero. Then my wife she comes to the rescue and she said, put on the refrigerator. The just shall live by faith. I'm saying, woman, <laughs> we got some bills, but you put on the refrigerator that the just shall live by faith. We kept serving. We kept praying. We kept seeking God. And guess what? I come to learn that the just do live by faith. And because we was connected with the good shepherd, he didn't let us go without anything. He didn't let us go lacking for nothing. Amen. Matter of fact, he moved us from a place of doubt to a place of shout. I need somebody in West Side today understand that the good shepherd will move you from a place of doubt to a place of shout because every promise that he had promised you and I will come to pass and we can walk around and we can declare that the Lord will provide. He will protect. And because he knows my name, he going to do some stuff for those of you that are gathered in West Side on this day that you've been wanting, you've been asking, you've been seeking. And he said, I'm about to move you to a place of overflow, to a place are more than enough. The good shepherd. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like KU versus Critton yesterday. Five minutes left in the game and we count down. But watch this. Watch this. Reminded of this story. I shared this story this morning. Young lady 
was sold into sex slavery by her mother who was hooked on crack cocaine at the age of 13. She became pregnant. By the time she reached the age of 14, she was pregnant again. By the time she reached the age of 18, she was pregnant with her third child. But like all of us, she had this nosy neighbor. You ain't got to tell on her, him or her, amen. I know you got one. They know every time you leave home, every time you cut your grass, they cut their grass. Every time you wash their car, they wash their car. Come on with me. Y'all got some nosy neighbors in your neighborhood, amen. I got one across the street from me, amen. Every time I do something, he do it. He try to do it either bigger or better, amen. But anyway, this old lady, and watch this young lady, and, and, and she noticed and she sensed some stuff wasn't right. So she began to kind of court the young lady, kind of get some stuff out of her. Finally, because of the good shepherd, this older lady was able to get this young lady out of the situation she was in. Very dire situation. The man was very abusive to her, controlled her. Because of the good shepherd, he knew her name. He knew she needed to be provided for, and he was going to protect her. So the young lady got delivered out of the situation. Now she go all over the world teaching young ladies about this thing called sex trafficking. It's right here in Leavenworth, right here in Lansing, and right here in the state of Kansas. This thing is real. That might not be your story, but you once was in a situation you didn't think you could get out of. You had some habits that you didn't think you could get rid of. But because somewhere in your life, somebody had introduced you to the good shepherd, you knew you could call on him. And he was right there waiting. And he's here today in this room today waiting on someone to say, Lord, here I am. Matter of fact, in Alabama, we would put it like this, praise team. I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wound, and sad. But I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Thank God for the good shepherd. Thank God for the good shepherd. Do you know the good shepherd today? Won't he be there for you? Won't he take care of you? Won't he wrap you in his arm and rock you and let you know that everything is going to be all right? Oh, I got to get out of here. But I love the good shepherd today. Because a good shepherd have been with me every step of the way. I got to go to my seat, two minute warning. June of last year, the good shepherd came into my room after suffering a major stroke. And I told the good shepherd, you called me to preach. And I can't preach if I'm not mobile. I can't preach. If I don't have my speech, I can't preach. And if you be God, and if you be the good shepherd, you got to deliver me from this thing called smoke. And I stand here today to let you know because of the good shepherd, I don't have no residual of the sickness because the good shepherd is my Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. He's my Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He's my peace. Is there anybody in one side? So thank God for the good shepherd. God bless you.
Keep singing with me about the good shepherd, Jesus, and his reckless love for us. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. So, so good to me. Hey, Westside, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, we want to thank um, Dr. Lewis for yes. being with us today, and I so enjoyed having him with us today. Um, for one, Psalm 23 is one of my favorites. It is. Yeah. Um, I you know. had a good time with that. I could, you were just really into the, the passage there. Yeah, yeah it, it is. So, it, um, I, we, I know we talked a lot about kind of the commentary as we were going through um but it is one that i often go back through and the way he tied in the statements from john of i am yeah. the good shepherd into the psalms 23 it was just such a powerful analogy for me yes. and i the way he brought that around is such into his personal life and um for those of you that didn't catch his story at the end mm -hmm. 
Um, Dr. Lewis has a very powerful testimony. He um, had a serious health condition where he had a, a less than a 1% chance of survival. I mean, he is literally a walking miracle. So when he says that the Good Shepherd provides and protects and cares for his people, he's living proof of that. Yeah, I and I've heard his story. Mm -hmm. When we've done one of our nights of worship, mm -hmm. he really shared that story. So uh, if I'm plugging our next quarter's night of worship. Make sure you attend that because I mean, so many awesome things happen there. But I kind of, I want to, I just want to reiterate a, a portion of some of the scripture about the good, um, the good shepherd uh, that really stuck out, stuck out to me, <laughs> stuck out to me. But <clears throat> it's it's about the Lord always being present and always being near. This is from Psalm 139. Uh, I'll just read th one through three. Um, it's a, you have looked deep into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I'm resting or when I'm working, and from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. I love that. Yeah. Um, those scriptures are on the back of our Talk It Over notes. Um, they were additional scriptures that Dr. Lewis <clears throat> used today, mm -hmm. and I think that it goes right into our questions, and these questions are part of the notes that we post every week. And uh, the notes are great because what we want to do through these 1KC um, messages through, right. the, through the next several weeks is we want you guys to ask, who is Jesus? Right. Because John wanted his readers to ask, who is Jesus? And that led to these seven I am statements. And uh, this week we talked about how Jesus made the statement of I am the good shepherd. Yeah. And uh, what thoughts do you have when you consider that God is a good shepherd who knows you? Yeah, and we were, you know, part of that commentary you mentioned, part of that, our commentary is that just the power, not only the power of being known, but it's like when you are vulnerable enough, when you allow someone to know you, mm -hmm. I mean, God already knows you, right? The, the Bible tells us he already knows us yeah. from afar or near. But when you allow yourself and you open yourself up to that possibility of being known by God, that is such a powerful, that's a life-changing event. That's a life-changing moment. Well, I think the truth is <clears throat> he already deeply knows us. He already does. I mean, what you read was that he knows everything, everything. about us. But I think that there comes a moment where when you acknowledge it, Yes. Um, there's truth in that. Just like when a what shepherd you so elegantly uh -huh. stating it. I'll just wait. I'll I'll say something like <laughs> flubbergust and you know it'll come out. But when you acknowledge that you are deeply <clears throat> known by your creator, just like a good mm. shepherd knows everything about his sheep, like he can identify the temperaments of his sheep and he knows what sheep is most likely to wander off. Right. Or what sheep is really dumb. And if if you're <laughs> if you're asking which one wanders off, it's probably you. <laughs> Yeah. If you have to ask, I was you put you in that did. dumb part. I almost like no, don't ask. Yeah. If you don't know which one it is, it's probably you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah, but the good shepherd knows his sheep. Yeah, and that's why Jesus says, "I am the good shepherd because I know my sheep," and uh, he knows us. He deeply knows us. He knows everything about us, and uh, whether you want to acknowledge that or not, it's still true. And right. but when you do acknowledge it, it opens the way for this this dynamic relationship to take place. And so we invite you to ask those questions, to read the scripture in, in the notes today, and to... Well, what are some practical next steps? Because I feel like that's kind of mm -hmm. where we're walking to right now are some next steps. So you mentioned reading through the Talk It Over notes, looking mm -hmm. through some of the questions to guide you, reading yeah, through the scripture. absolutely. Um, <clears throat> some great next steps are to read through the scriptures that we've posted on this, um, being in a 1KC group yep. is a safe place. Even if mm. you're not sure that you're there yet, you don't have to be there. This is a great place to ask these questions. Oh, yeah. um, following through on a 1KC listening plan mm -hmm. is yep. a great way. Um, I think we're on day 19. 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not too late to join. They're, they're really easy to follow. Yeah. But this is, this is the time to ask those questions to figure out who is Jesus. Because John, the writer of this gospel, knew that people would have this question, who is Jesus? This man that lived 2,000 years ago. Right. People would still be asking, who is Jesus? Isn't and that amazing? So he summed it up into seven, well, more than, but we're dealing right. with these seven right. I am statements that Jesus made. 
And so today we talked about how Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely, okay, so just to kind of wrap things up here. Um, a nice little bow on it. Yeah, Dr. Lewis, thank you so much for joining us today. We sincerely hope you're not in timeout when you go home. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put in a good word for you. And uh, honestly, we can listen to you all day. So if you want to just ignore that timer, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> Yeah. Casey will never. We're know. looking forward to the next service. <laughs> if you missed any part of the last one, stick around. You're in for a treat again. You are. And actually, you know, we've got one more service. It's a great opportunity to invite someone to join you online. Yeah. So we've got a little share share button. Um, we'll drop it in the comments, like we <laughs> like to say for some reason. We'll drop it in the comments. You can click that. the yeah. I don't know. It's probably drop you. anything. Yeah, probably me. <laughs> I wish they coined that phrase. I wish I was that cool. I know. I know, right? Oh, yeah. I wish really you were that not. cool too. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> here I go again. Okay, well, before I get out of hand, Westside, love you. Um, reach out to us for anything. You've got questions, you want to know next steps, you want to know what our you know favorite springtime activity is, whatever. Yeah, first day of spring. I, feel, I, I, feel, I just feel so accomplished when I make it through winter. I hate winter. It's an accomplishment, actually. Yeah. It is. All right. So we're going to switch over. We're going to see you next week. I just know we will. And uh, may the Lord go with you this week. Have a great week, Westside. Bye.